Hello my fellow wonderful homo sapiens, welcome to Life Study Library, my name is Lai Yosh. Today we're going to be talking about yet another exciting topic, type of music that smart people listen to. Likewise, in this channel I'm going to be introducing these interesting and helpful scientific and psychological information by implementing evidence from scientific studies. If you want to learn more about these, then please make sure to subscribe to my channel, Life Study Library, and like this video and support this project. Alright, let's go! So, what do you think is the genre of music that smart people listen to? A uh, typical answer might be classic music, a bit of Mozart or Tchaikovsky. Well, today's study from the University of Warwick claims that smart people like heavy metal. They did a study on 2007 where they collected 1,057 students aged from 11 to 18 years old and did a survey on what type of music they liked and how this correlated with how well they performed in school. So these teenagers were sampled on the potential relationship between their music preference and their success in school, their excellence in grades. The results showed that the students who were in the top 5 threshold of academic grades, kids who were in the top 5%, tend to like heavy metal and put that on their answer for the survey. And of course, I am aware of the potential uncertainty of the cause and effect. Do kids who are smart tend to like heavy metal, or does listening to heavy metal makes kids smarter? The causal relationship between these two factors is unclear because this study is an observational study. However, the research team suggests that the cause and effect is really there. The reason why they say this is because People who are smart, who are intelligent, typically feel lonely. This is because they often feel a difference in intelligence when compared to regular people. In terms of many things like how they think, or what kind of common sense they have, or how they generally perceive the world, intelligent people are always a minority because they're uncommon, right? Because of this, they often feel lonely when thrown into a pool of normies. This should make sense when thinking about the stereotype that smart people or nerds are often introverted and live by themselves without making any friends. And then in contrast, the extroverts, those who try hard to hog the center of the stage, not everyone, but they are typically the ones who are not so bright in their minds. But anyways, it is scientifically proven that people are usually better off mentally and when mingling among friends and socializing to become happy. But there is this one exception, and that is intelligent people. People like Zuckerberg, the people who you think of when thinking about smart people, usually will feel much better when they're alone away from society, focusing their full attention to their crafts and hobbies and work. To them, these kinds of activities make them feel much better and happier than socializing. And thus, there's a legitimate relationship between people who are intelligent and these same people being introverted. And while they are alone, they often listen to heavy metal as in like a form of stress release. Because they feel the difficulty from relating with the general society about so many things, they rely on listening to heavy metal to kind of release that stress. Another reason for this connection is the history behind the genre of heavy metal. Because of the common notion that heavy metal is kind of a, a niche genre, or at least it's it's not the number one most popular music genre. I think it's safe to say that it's generally a music genre for, for outcasts who can't fit in with the majority. And that just made me realize that rap and hip hop also started out as an outcast genre. But now they've grown to become like this insanely popular genre in the United States. Like at least within the United States. They're like without a doubt the number one most popular music genre. And when you think about it like this, heavy metal does give these smart people a dose of the happy juice when they try to work hard to become exceptional in their work or in school or in life in general. When these smart but introverted people try to go into to this job or transfer to somewhere else or even when they try to become entrepreneurs or something. The study provided evidence that while listening to heavy metal does not automatically make you smart. Those who are already intelligent tend to listen to heavy metal in a form of stress release and it helps them de-stress from many things in life that they have to deal with. It's like a stereotypical trope in like movies and books where some characters are so much smarter than other regular people and they start to realize, oh, me and the rest of these bunch are just way too different. Nobody understands what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling. Now, unlike in the movies, it is uncommon for these geniuses to turn evil because of this, but it is common for them to feel lonely. And additionally, if you're so much smarter than others, you start to kind of grow up faster than others, and not necessarily in a good way. 
What I mean is that these geniuses will notice the dark sides of the world. Examples like systemic racism or subtle bullying or adults telling you to be honest or those who work hard will be rewarded but are actually hiding the fact that the world doesn't operate like a utopian society that they say it does. Basically, these geniuses realize these dualities of the world way faster than other regular kids, and because they can't have meaningful conversation with other kids, they turn to the adults. But they know that these adults, not all of them but many of them, are the ones who are telling these lies, so they can't be trusted. And as a result, they have nobody to talk to and share what they're thinking or what they're feeling. And to cope with the stress of loneliness, they rely on heavy metal, another field of culture and media known to have suffered the same fate of isolation. In a way, these geniuses are able to relate with the overall atmosphere of heavy metal, a music genre that is stereotypically known as the music for the antisocial. So overall, the study is saying that smart people tend to start liking heavy metal. Or even like if you're super ambitious about a certain thing, whether it's a career or just a hobby, the study says that when you're walking the path of solitude, there's a higher chance of you listening and liking heavy metal in order to kind of cope with the stress of being alone. And honestly, walking down the path of solitude, that alone is not even the hardest part. You also need to consider other people, the normies, trying to bring you down. Those who are isolated are always the easiest to bully and make fun of, as it is also a common trope in movies where the loner kid gets picked on by the school bully who also happens to be the popular kid. So for these lonely and introverted people, heavy metal essentially is a form of defense against these adversaries. And as a kid who was bullied in the past myself, I am really into heavy metal as well. So overall, this study puts a big smile on my face. And for those of you who experienced bullying or felt lonely and isolated themselves in the past or, or even right now, I must say that there is absolutely no need for you to try to fit with the crowd. I want to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. You have so much potential being alone. Please, please, please stay like that. And the thing is that I'm not even done here yet because I have to tell you about how listening to heavy metal can also make you feel happier. This one is a study done at the University of Queensland, Australia. It collected samples aged between uh, 18 to 34 years old, so adults. And these samples were all regular listeners to heavy metal or hard rock or punk, these kind of extreme music genres. These samples were first tasked to remember a bad memory from the past, so they had to remember things like being unfairly treated at work or bullied at school, these kinds of bad memories that made them feel angry or sad. After this, the samples were divided into two groups, where group A was tasked to listen to heavy metal and hard rock music for 10 minutes, while the other group, B, was told to just sit and wait for the same amount of time. The purpose of this was to see if one of these two groups ended up less stressed than the other, and the results showed that more people who listened to heavy metal or hard rock or screamo reported a decrease in their stress level. And this was true even when the samples did not regularly listen to heavy metal. So some might have said that these samples were only able to de-stress because they regularly listen to a lot of heavy metal. However, they reported beforehand that no one in the sample group listened to hard music on a daily basis. So this is substantial evidence that shows you the benefits of listening to heavy metal and hard rock. It'll mitigate your negative stress level. But keep holding onto your butts because there's even more. It's also proven that these hard rock music will increase your motivation. It was shown by the study that among all the changes that happen in our body, like the decrease of negativity because of listening to heavy metal, the greatest influence of heavy metal was seen in the increase in motivation. So not only heavy metal and hard rock music mitigates negativity, but it also increases motivation and positively excites us. It's proof that when we need a lot of motivation and kind of when we need a uh, like a pump of adrenaline, when we're trying to do something new or when we're trying to accomplish something hard, heavy metal and these heavy music works as a great source of motivation. So it might be useful to introduce yourself in the world of heavy metal or hard rock or punk in order to give yourself a motivational boost. No wonder so many of the gym freaks listen to heavy metal and hard rock music while they work out and get shredded. 
And now, let's talk about the mechanism of why this is the case. These intelligent people, or those who are trying to accomplish something hard, a lot of these people are good at choosing and listening to music that matches their emotional state. When you're mad, you'll most likely listen to something metal or, or and like aggressive, and when you're sad, you'll probably listen to emo or something. And I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent, but when you're in a negative emotional state, it is scientifically proven that you're much more able to overcome that negative state when you face it head on rather than trying to ignore or avoid it. Rather than trying to make yourself feel positive by listening to positive and happy music, you're much better off listening to music that matches your aggression or sadness, these types of negative emotion. So this kind of relates with what I've said in some of the past videos about how you're much more able to overcome your negativity by facing it head on rather than force yourself to feel positive or convince yourself to think of happy things. The typical advice to not feel sad or calming down doesn't work because you simply are not going to be able to trick your mind into thinking positively when you're already in a negative emotional state. Rather, you should be honest with the negative emotion that you have right now and use these heavy metal or hard rock or punk or rage music as a tool to express your negative emotion. When you're sad because you got dumped, you should listen to sad music about breaking up. When you're mad because you got yelled at, you should listen to music about rage and you know stuff of that sort. And by doing so, by releasing your negativity the right way, you're going to be able to see your negative sadness or anger or the issue in a calmer state. And then you're going to be able to see, oh, what really happened here was this. So that's what actually happened. Why didn't I realize this sooner? I could totally take care of this. And then you're going to be able to make a path to correctly solve the issue. And then you, as a calm person, will be able to make the right decision and connect it to the right action. This study introduced heavy metal and other hard music as a tool you can use psychologically to solve these negative stress and eventually lead you to positive source of emotion like motivation or concentration. And from here, you can calmly make the smart decision in whatever you're doing. And because you repeat this, you're going to be able to continue making smart decisions. And that's what makes you smart. And one thing that was lacking in this particular study was that the entire process only applies to those who like heavy music and it didn't figure out if the same process applies when people listen to other genres of music. But I would assume that this whole effect applies with other music genres. I mean, people already do that. They listen to something that'll hype themselves up when they're happy, or listen to calm soundtracks when they're focused and like studying or something. So the main takeaway is that, particularly when you're feeling negative, listen to heavy metal to solve this issue. When you're feeling mad and you want to destroy the house, listen to heavy metal songs about frustration and anger. And when you're feeling sad and you want to cry your eyes out, listen to songs about crying your eyes out. By doing this, you're going to be able to hear something that's relatable to what you're currently feeling yourself and will be able to realize, oh, so that was what I was feeling. I couldn't get my finger on it until I listened to this song. Listen to songs that match your current state of emotion. And if that emotion is a negative one to you, then you're going to be able to sort of calmly analyze that state of emotion effectively, which will lead you to realize how you can solve this issue. So that was the end for this video. Uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so basically, if you're into heavy metal or hard rock or punk rock, these kinds of intense music genres, then you should feel pretty happy as it is a sign of strong evidence that you are smart. By listening to songs that matches your negative state of emotion like rage or sadness, you're going to be able to see your own negative state of emotion or the issue itself in a more calm and uh, objective state of mind. And once you do that and make the monster something you can actually see instead of just a cloud of mystery and darkness, you're going to be able to effectively and correctly find a way to defeat it and make the right choice to successfully move forward in your life. And because listening to heavy metal and hard rock allows you to do this, you should all indulge yourself in the genre. And then once you start to see yourself succeeding in life by making the right choice, you're going to start to feel the sense of control, that you can successfully control these negative emotions, and you'll start to feel more concentrated and more motivated. Overall, you'll feel all these positive emotions. And by repeating this process, you'll probably be seen by 
others as a smart person who makes smart decisions. So that was pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you for listening. And to add a little bit of sauce to this cuisine, I want to talk about the idea of controlling your negative emotion, the ability of self-control. So many people have said in the past that successful people know the way of self-control in order to not get distracted from what you're supposed to do or w what you want to do and not to get tempted or do distracting and harmful activities and to not get seduced by other people into doing harmful and wasteful behavior. In order to do all these, you need self-control. And a lot of people think that in order to develop self-control, you need to develop willpower or motivation. And yes, motivation and willpower does have an effect when trying to uh, develop self-control, but there's something that's more essential and honestly easier and will probably require less failed attempts in trying to help develop self-control, which is called automating. Think about it. As a regular healthy human being, you'll probably be able to walk normally, right? Like, you know how to step with your right or left leg first and then take the second step with their other leg. You don't need to consciously be thinking left, right, left, right, you know? Do you know why you can do this? Because you've done it so, so, so many times throughout your life. And yes, you did have trouble with this when you were a baby, but ever since then, you've been practicing how to walk, and now the act is something that's so natural to you that you don't even need to think about it. This is what I mean when you automate your behavior to make or break a certain habit. I'll talk about this extensively in the future, so until then, you can read some of my book recommendations that are listed in my description. I actually have quite a few books from the past that either directly or indirectly talks about building a new habit and breaking a bad habit like this one. For now, as an introductory read, I recommend you Making Habits, Breaking Habits, Why We Do Things, Why We Don't, and How to Make Any Change Stick by Jeremy Dean. This book heavily emphasizes on the concept that we usually think we are in control of many things in our lives, but are actually not in reality. The biggest example of this showing is habit making or habit breaking. This book talks about why we struggle so much with making new habits and breaking old habits and also why this behavior even became a thing. It really is a must read and I'm pretty sure many of you watching this video have already read it in the past or at least heard about it. If you have read it before then this is a good chance for you to read it again to kind of review and learn these information again and if it's your first time then it's an easy and good start where you can learn about these interesting science and also be able to make and break habits. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to Life Study Library and like this video so you can learn about these interesting and important helpful science and psychology. This has been Life Study Library. I've been your host, Lai Yosh, and I'll see you in another video. Lai Yosh out.